Hey, crafty friends. It's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I'm really excited to be guest designing for Brutus Monroe again this month, and today I've got a fun peekaboo card for you using their fishbowl stamp set. I think it's uh, a lot of fun. This card was actually inspired by one that I saw um, from Allie, from Allie's Allie Loves Card Making, um, and I've got a link to her channel in the video that she made where I saw the card idea originally here. Um, she used a Lawn Fawn, the uh, pop-up toaster die. I don't have that one, but the mechanism is actually really easy to put together. So I'm going to show you how to do it without that die set. Um, I did use a couple other dies in my stash, but they're, it's, it's easy enough to recreate this whether you have the dies or not. The first thing that I'm going to do though is go ahead and color my background pieces. I've got some heavy watercolor paper here and I sprinkled on some of the Brutus Monroe uh, color burst powder. This one is the blue and then I just spritzed on a little bit of water on top and I'll set it with my heat gun. I can also move the color around a little bit with the heat gun. These powders are a lot of fun to play with. If you haven't tried them before you might want to might want to get some and, and give them a try. There are other watercolor powders on the market, um, but I really like these color bursts because it's it's not just one color. Um, inside each bottle, there's a main color, like for example, this one's blue, but there are little tiny crystals that are other colors too. So if you get real close, you'll get little tiny bursts of other colors which is really fun. It adds extra texture and dimension. Um, so I enjoy playing with these. Now I've gone ahead and grabbed another piece of watercolor paper and then I'm going to sprinkle on some of the orange and the pink and that'll give me a pretty coral but again a lot of texture here. And I'm just going to blow it around and and it, it's a ton of fun to play with. If your colors are blending too much, if you, you've added more water than you intended, you can just go back and pick up some of the extra ink um, from your craft pad that you're working on. Um, and I should warn you, it, it's kind of messy. Your fingers will get inky um, and you'll definitely want to protect the surface underneath that you're working on. But it's watercolor so it does clean up fairly easily. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and do my stamping. I, I didn't mention off camera, I also did some green and I cut out my seaweed pieces, uh, but I didn't think you want to watch me play with color bursts all day. <laughs> so I'm back to my stamping. I grabbed that whale and I've gone ahead and set them in my misty. I've got another piece of that watercolor cardstock just so that my white papers are all the same shade of white. Um, and this is cold pressed paper, so there's one side that's smooth and one side that's rough. I'm stamping on the smooth side. And I went ahead and I prepped it with a powder tool, and then I stamped it with VersaFine Claire ink, the black ink. And then I just put some clear embossing powder on top, and I can zap it real quick with my heat gun. And that will give me a nice crisp image that I can then go ahead and watercolor. Um, you can use Copics with it as well, but Copics don't work well on watercolor paper. So I'll use my Arteza Real Brush markers for that. Um, I also want to stamp Pull on my little tab there. Now that tab I had cut out with a stitched rectangle die. So at the top I'm going to just go ahead and, and emboss the word Pull. And I'm just picking one of the, the little stamps from this Lawn Fawn set here. Little stamps like this are a little tricky to line up, but not too bad. And I'm just going to repeat the process, except this time I'm going to use Versamark Clear Ink. It's clear and sticky. And I'm also going to uh, switch out my embossing powder to a white embossing powder instead of the clear. And I went ahead and I stamped it twice. My Versamark pad is... It's actually going on almost 20 years old now, <laughs> but it's still juicy, it's still working, so I haven't switched it out yet. Um, and you'll see that I keep my embossing powder in a little drawer. I keep, um, it's a, a Deflecto drawer set, there's two drawers there, and this is an idea I got from Mary Polanco. It's a great idea. The, the two most common powders that I use all the time are clear and white, so I have one in each drawer. I labeled the drawer, and then I have... Um, color coordinating spoons in there just so that I know which color I'm working with. And then when I was 
stamp in the pull tab, I decided that my whale might be lonely if he's the only critter on the card. So I grabbed out a starfish and another little tiny fish. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp and emboss those as well. Just repeat the same process. And then once I've got those all stamped up, I can go ahead and color. If you don't want to watch me color, just skip ahead about 30 seconds in the video. I sped through this really quickly. It's very simple coloring. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm using my Arteza uh, Real Brush Markers, and I've got three colors for each one. They blend nicely, especially on the watercolor paper. Um, I just used sort of a light, medium, and a dark, and I let the color guide, or I'm sorry, the lines and the dots on the stamps kind of be my shading guides. So super simple. I did use a little bit of water to blend some of the gray on his teeth and his eye just so that there's a little more depth and dimension. And I also uh, lifted a little bit of color on the uh, top highlight part of him. And now this stamp set, I believe there's a coordinating die set. I don't have it, um, but I only had these three little images and they're super simple to cut out. I didn't even bother loading them into my scan and cut because it was uh, super fast to cut out with scissors here. So I went ahead and fussy cut those, and then we can um, work on the next part of the card. Okay, uh, let me show you what I cut out. Now the uh, blue piece that we cut, that big one, I used the uh, smaller wonky stitched uh, rectangle die from Avery L. My pull tab is cut from this heavy doodle stitch strips of ease, and I actually cut two of them so that I could make it thicker. I used the Brutus Monroe small alphabet or lowercase alphabet to cut out Get Whale Soon uh, from Black Cardstock. And then this art, um, art impression stamp set and this Lawn Fawn set to cut out my seaweed and coral pieces. And then what I did not cut out yet are um, the circle, the little indentation for your finger there. And then also we need a slider track. And I'm just using this really skinny, it's it's a bar that's in an Avriel uh, birthday bust set. And I'm going to go ahead and line that up um, parallel to the left and right sides of that blue piece. Um, just so that it, it's straight. I do want the tab to go straight up and down, but I do have it slightly offset to the right. And then I'll line up the circle right on top of it, but it's going to be sticking out halfway um, above just so that I'm I'm cutting a notch for your finger. And then a skinny little slider track. If you don't have that die, you can use another skinny die. Look at look through your stash. You may have like a balloon stem or something that works. Uh, lowercase letter L. I think there's one in the waffle flower set that I have um, that would work as well too. It does not need to be this long. I'm actually only going to be using the top about an inch of that um, track. So you can have a short one and you can even cut it out with a, a craft knife. Okay, so now let's work on the other pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue the two layers of the uh, stitched strip of bees together. That just gives me a, a thicker, stronger pull tab. And notice that that's, um, those two layers are two different lengths. I, I just used scraps to cut those, and I knew I wasn't going to use the full length of it, so I'm, I'm actually going to cut it down right now. I only need a, roughly three inches of it. And then I'm going to take a little tab, or I'm sorry, this strip is three eighths of an inch wide and I just cut it with my trimmer. Um, it's extra long, so I just grab a scrap, something that you have close by that's uh, about three eighths of an inch wide. And then I'm gonna fold it from the back around the front and then back on itself, roughly in the center. Um, when I fold these two, those two pieces are not actually meeting in the center. There's a little bit of a gap, and that gap is important. You. It doesn't need to be a big gap, just a little bit. That is gonna help it ride better in the channel when you have the other layers on top of it. And you can see, you just feed it through from the back. And I haven't even glued those two pieces together yet because I'm not sure on the spacing. I'll glue those together in a second. But roughly get the, the tab near the bottom. And then 
it's gliding well. And now I want to take this piece of uh, cardstock here. This is 5 eighths of an inch wide. And I'm just going to cut it into, into two pieces. Um, I will overlap on those little pieces that are sticking out, those little flaps. And I'm going to glue it in place so that it's hanging down about half an inch below those tabs that are that we're gluing to. It's really important to glue below the tabs because we're going to add wiper arms and, and they need to be below these little tabs. And it doesn't have to be exact, but it does need to be roughly half an inch. And also notice that I am not butting them up next to each other in the center. I'm making that gap a little bit wider for this layer. Um, that is also important to it. It's going to help it move up and down the channel a little more smoothly because when we add those wiper arms it's actually going to pull the bottom of it in a little bit you'll see what i mean in a second okay so now these are the two little wiper arms those are just another set of three eighths inch strips and i'm going to take an eighth inch hole punch and i'm just going to line the the strip up with the bottom outer edge of those tabs that we just glued on and then I'll grab mini brads and I will connect them so we're going to do the same thing to both sides you just want um, line it up on the outer edge down at the bottom there and then go ahead and connect it and you want to make sure that your wiper arm can can move freely so don't tighten that brad too much and again, whatever you do to one side, you're going to do to the other side. So line it up in the bottom corner there. And then just connect it with a brad. And make sure it spins freely too. Okay, now I'm going to kind of play with the spacing and figure out how tall or, or where to glue the uh, pull tab in place on the back. I'm sorry, the pull tab is not going to be glued in place. I'm going to glue the slider portion to the pull tab. But I need to figure out the, the placement. And this is just kind of an, an estimate here. I'm, I'm sort of eyeballing it. And those wiper arms are extra long right now. Don't worry, we'll trim those all down. Um, and I'm bringing in my whale here just to, to kind of make sure that it's going to sit where I want it before I glue the tab in place. If you don't use a stitched rectangle um, and you don't pre-stamp pull at the top, you could just go ahead and uh, glue it to the back um, from the get-go and trim the, the top there. Um, but I already stamped the word pull and I wanted that stitching. So once I figure out the placement, I can go ahead and glue those two pieces together here so that it's all one unit. And I'm just sliding the, um, sliding it out of the way so I can put the glue there in place and then press it down. And now, it's good to go. It's all one unit now. So I'm going to open up my wiper blades and then I'll grab that hole punch again and I'm going to punch just through the wiper blade and the background. I am not punching through those other tab pieces. We don't want to catch those. We just want the, the wiper blade and the background just past the tab or just, just outside those tabs. And we'll do the same thing right here. And we're starting to make a W shape. Once we get those brads in place, you can test it out. And you'll see that it moves, but you see how the bottom kind of overlaps itself? So we can go ahead and trim that extra bit off. And I'm, I'm kind of making it more of a W shape now. 
and then you can see it, it glides much easier. Isn't that fun? Okay, so now that we've got the hard part done, we can do a little bit of decorating. I trimmed those wiper arms down and I glued down my words and that little starfish and I'm gonna glue on the whale. Notice that I'm only gluing him to one side of the inner tab. You, you can't connect the whale across both. If you do, then it's not gonna move. It's gonna like bunch up in the middle of it and it's not gonna move. So just pick one tab or the other and glue your critter to that, okay? So now I've got um, foam tape that I just put on the back. I went um, and created a little channel for the pull tab and I did not put any foam on the back of the pull tab. And then I've got my A2 card base. I used a ruler to help me line it up because this um, stitched rectangle is a lot smaller than my normal like 1 8 inch border so it's kind of harder to eyeball and get it centered. Although I probably could have done it without the ruler. <laughs> I'm not sure that it's completely centered. Anyhow, so once you get it in place, the, the hard part's done. We've, we've done all the major work. The only thing left to do is uh, decorate and, and kind of cover up the whale and those little arms so that when you pull on it, he peeks out and it's a surprise. So I'm taking a double layer of foam tape here and I'm gonna apply it in between those little brads and then I'm going to take a single layer of foam tape and just go on top of uh, those brads just because the brad already sticks up a little bit. So adding one layer of foam tape is equal to the height of the double layer right next to it. I want the, the foam layer to be an even height. Um, and I do want it to stick up above my whale because I'm going to stick the little clusters of seaweed on top of those guys there. And notice that I, I made three little clusters. I just kind of uh, glued my layers together until I had something that was fairly opaque. You don't want to see through it because you don't want to see the foam or the brads. You don't want to see the mechanism. And you want to try to hide the whale. It's okay if he's kind of peeking out. You want, you want to know something's there. But when you stick those on, it's pretty fun. Now you may have to trim away little bits um, and double check your gluing, make sure that, that everything is moving smoothly. And then now I have this third piece that I wanna put in the center. This one has the coral, the bright color there. And I need it to be higher than the other pieces so that it doesn't catch. So now I've got a triple layer of foam and I'm only gonna put it at the very bottom of that piece of coral just so that the seaweed pieces can move freely underneath it. And then I'll go ahead and stick that guy in place, trim up anything that would be sticking out, um, and stick it in place, and then test it again. These cards are so much fun, you're gonna be pulling that tab all the time. <laughs> it's like light up cards, you can't help yourself, you're just gonna wanna play with it all the time. Um, now I did notice that I had uh, one piece of seaweed on that cluster that wasn't completely glued flat to itself. Um, so it's, it's kind of uh, tricky to get to it underneath the coral, but I was able to slide it up and then just glue it down. If it were really catching, I could have trimmed it away. But again, I'm trying to get as much coverage there as possible. So I just glued it down. And then that's it. The last thing to do is just add a little bit of sparkle. I added a couple sequins. I don't know why figuring out where your sequins go is the hardest part, <laughs> but for me that always is. Uh, so I just glued these down and then I don't realize that this sequin here, this last sequin that I place um, is actually in the way of the arm, but I didn't test it while the glue was wet and then I added diamond glaze on top of it and I didn't realize it. So I'll end up moving that down to the bottom corner after it's dry. But that's it. It's a fun card, right?
If you like today's video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. You can also ring that little bell so you don't miss any new videos. You can find links to all of the products that I used on my blog. That's down below. And also the link to Allie's um, video so you can see how she made her card. And you'll also find me on the Brutus Monroe blog. So yay, pop on over there if you'd like. And I've got links here to a few more interactive cards you might be interested in. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.